Hello, uh, thanks for coming uh, before the, just in the lunch break. Um, I'm going to talk about, uh, this is a quick talk, so we'll have time to we'll have lunch, don't worry. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, development of TVOS applications with uh, TVML kit and Grails and Grails 3. It's, my name is Sergio Delamo. I work for OCI in the Grails team. Um, check guides.grace.org uh, every Monday for a new guide. Uh, we actually have a guide about uh, TVOS uh, development with, uh, with Grace 3. It's uh, really similar to the content of this talk. Um, do you have an Apple TV? Any of you? Cool. Um, so basically, an Apple TV is a hardware device that runs an operating system called TVOS. Mm, what is TVML Kit? TVML Kit is a framework which comes directly from Apple, so it's not a third-party framework, but a full support framework coming from Apple. Uh, I think it's two years ago in a, a WWDC event, uh, they announced uh, the possibility of developing web applications, web uh, applications for TVOS, uh, either with TVML Kit or with native apps. Uh, we are going to talk here about uh, using TVML Kit because that uh, plays into the client server architecture. And this is where Grace is going to play. Um, when you buy an Apple TV, many of the applications that comes already installed with the Apple TV are already TVML Kit applications. For example, this is the App Store. This is the Movies application. Uh, this is the Trailers application, I think, or, the, or, the, or also the Movies application. Uh, this is the music application. Uh, they are all TVML kit applications, so the movies, the TV shows, the podcast, App Store, um, the search. Uh, they are all TVML kit applications. Uh, so what does TVML kit offers? Uh, it gives us a native experience. Uh, so basically, uh, Apple folks have uh, focused uh, a lot to have a really nice experience with TVML kit applications in terms of performance and in terms of look and feel. You get a lot of uh, design features uh, for free, and we'll see some of them. Uh, basically, the framework deals with two components, with XML and JavaScript. Yes, XML, like in the old world. Uh, it's configurable, extensible, and they, uh, whenever you hear talk about TVML kit, um, they really say that it's not a web browser, uh, but uh, the concept of client-server architecture uh, and the way a TVML document is constructed will remind you a lot to, a, to an HTML document. Um, we'll see that uh, soon. So basically, building an app with TVML kit uh, involves like creating a new project in Xcode. You will see that the changes you have to do to the project are minimal. Basically, you have to point to a server uh, where the Grace application is. Uh, and then basically gives you TVML documents uh, which you can style. Uh, uh, um, which it's like a top of JavaScript, which basically gives you some of the components you are using. It is. The application architecture is like this. Uh, you have like a device with a uh, TVOS. Uh, once you connect the first time, uh, the application will request the server to download some JavaScript. Uh, and the JavaScript basically here is the one who orchestrates the whole thing. Uh, he's going to basically ask the server for documents. And then he's going to render those documents into the into the television in the, the TVOS operating system. And once you use your remote control, like to play a movie or to, or to select an item, uh, that will basically trigger a JavaScript event, which in turn will ask the server for another document. We'll see that in code. And you will see it's really similar to what you are used to in HTML and JavaScript. It's the same concept. Um, so TVML and styles, basically TVML is markup. It's a, a kind of a standard of XML. Um, I myself have not able to find a DTD of the XML, so I have developed a plugin which does some custom validation, um, but still not perfect because I, I don't understand how they are not uh, like uh, uh, defining like a standard so you can validate your XML against. But yeah, 
this is an TVML document. Uh, as you will see, it reminds a lot to a traditional HTML page. Instead, you have like document, and then here you have like a style block. Uh, you can use like a, a template uh, by default, and it will look good. But uh, you can use like custom uh, media queries here, which will allow you to change some functionality of the template. Uh, so yeah, your imagination is the constraint here. You can change the styles uh, as it suits you. So this is, for example, uh, a template, a stack template indeed. Uh, the movies applications, uh, if you have an Apple TV or if you are gonna buy an Apple TV after this talk, here in the top, there is like a carousel. So this is like changing all the time with the, like the top movies and then they have like different shelves here with different movies and the movies are grouped into categories. Uh, so you define this with an XML document. We are gonna produce this kind of documents in, in the Grace application uh, and the TBOS is gonna render them. Uh, so it's all components, for example, the top component is a carousel, uh, then you have like a shelf, and then you have like part individual elements are these uh, lockup elements with images, and you will see we are gonna register like events uh, to allow us to navigate. So uh, TVML are templates, uh, Apple provides us with like I think like around 20 templates or something like that. Uh, it's everything is in the developer documentation. They have like a, an example of an XML document which renders any template. So basically what you need to do is you have to hook up your content uh, in the placeholders of the template. And you have many templates like uh, this is a template, this is another template, another template, many, many templates. Um, you have like a template for entering like username and password. You have a template for entering like search. Um, TVML kit uh, uses like uh, standard uh, components which you are used from JavaScript and then they have like particular uh, functionality uh, targeted to the TVOS. So for example, uh, you can like have, you have like media items objects and you can create like playlists and play them. So that's like functionality especially designed because at the end of the day, uh, TVML applications uh, are the best uh, category for TVML applications are apps which let people browse, interact, and consume catalog for content. And this is especially, uh, I think, a, a target where Grace fits perfectly. Uh, Grace allows you to create a, a listings, a really a powerful, and all the CRUD functionality that you get uh, almost for free uh, fits perfectly to create such a content. Um, then uh, why Grails, uh, it's a good fit to create the server side of these applications is uh, in, in this morning in Jeff's keynote, uh, he talked about JSON views. Uh, another part is markup views, which allows you to generate XML. Um, so this is under views.grace.org as well. Uh, at the bottom, you have like the documentation for markup views. We will see examples. Uh, so basically markup views, um, bring back uh, GSPs at one point where like the, uh, they fulfill the prophecy. You have like separations of concerns, like the views were different from the controllers. And at one point uh, in Grace 2, we were rendering like a lot of uh, JSON and XML. We were rendering it with Marshallers directly in the controllers or with classes. So JSON views and markup views uh, allow us to separate uh, the rendering of the views into its own layer again. Um, so that's why those are, um, particularly important for generating TBML applications. Asset Pipeline plugin um, is a really uh, easy to use plugin which allow us to, give, to get uh, minifications of both CSS and JavaScript files. Since TBML applications are gonna basically uh, have JavaScript uh, documents and XML documents, uh, all the power that Asset Pipeline gives us in the JavaScript world comes really handy when developing TBML applications. I have a plugin on the works, uh, which basically uh, gives you a domain class, which I will show you in an example uh, with uh, some CRUD functionality as well for the domain class, uh, and then some resources utilities uh, for uh, displaying some ratings. Um, so it's, uh, when you develop a TVML applications, probably you are gonna have like a video that you want to have like metadata, so probably you will have like rating, like this is a, a 
children can view this video or, or, or like a kind of a scoring, so you have like some resources. And then uh, in the plugin, it's going to be like a TVML validator. Uh, one of the challenges that you are going to face if you develop a TVML application with Grace is the XML that you are going to generate. It needs to be valid uh, to render it in the Apple TV application. So the validator uh, will try to enforce this. In a, you could run like an integration test and, and check that the XML that you are generating is valid. So let me show you the demo which is the last thing that I have. Um, so you create a project for a TBML application. Uh, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create uh, a TBML application. You basically select in the wizard, like you have like different operation system for Apple, you select TBML application, uh, you give it an age, you change the language, and this will generate a project like the, this one I have here. I have not changed anything but these two lines, basically. These lines, you tell the base. This is like a, a, a Grace application endpoint running on Pivotal Web Services. And you basically tell the entry point for the JavaScript. So he's going to do a request uh, into asset tvOS. Yes, and this is going to download all the JavaScript necessary. So let me show you. Uh, so once you run the application, uh, you will get, uh, like, this is like the TBOS, this is like an Apple TV uh, simulator. So let me move it to a different browser, desktop. So we are going to use like a, I think, it's called a, I think it's a collection template or a stack template as well. Uh, we are going to have like videos in different categories. Uh, all these uh, shadows and effects, you get it for free. Uh, it's part of the template and the whole zoom effect. Uh, once you select a video, uh, we are going to show like the video. A page and you see the metadata like who recorded the video, the video editors and the videographers and the music credits. Uh, we will define all this in the Grace application and the video and you can have like related videos as well. We'll generate all of this. Uh, and if I play play, this should play, I don't know if the internet connection is gonna be good enough. But there you go. So as you see, the background also is uh, dependent of this picture. The background colors uh, match the picture, so that's for free as well. Uh, nothing on my, on my side. So let me show you the Grace application. So in order to use uh, markup views, uh, if you create a Grace 3 application with the REST profile, the views uh, dependencies will be already injected into the project. If not, it's really easy to inject them. You go to uh, build.gradle, and you add the uh, build script dependency to the views. Um, you apply the views markup. And then here in the dependencies of the application, not the build script dependency, but the dependencies block, you have here views. You have here the uh, views markup dependency. And then I have the dependency to the plugin that I am developing. But the plugin, we will see what it gives us. So we have a controller, uh, but let's start with TVOS. So this is the entry point of JavaScript uh, that, the, uh, that we told our application, our, we told the, the Xcode project to go to assets TVOS. So that's the entry point. And then uh, what I did is, um, I basically did the tutorials that they have for, for them, and I have this TBML kit. I don't know if I can, yeah. So this is coming from the plugin. So these are like uh, helper methods, uh, which uh, if you install the plugin, you get for free, uh, which allow you to push a page. Basically, um, you can either, you create like a, a stack of templates, or you can swap the templates, you can replace them. So I have methods like to push a page, um, you can play media, and you can basically have a method which is called get document, which will basically uh, ask the server for an XML document, uh, and once it gets it back, it will render it. So these JavaScript methods are going to call a Grail endpoint, which is going to return XML. So let's see the controller. It's a controller really simple with two actions. One action uh, is going to be the listing, so that's going to be uh, the one, this, 
uh, screen is going to be returned by a grace action, the index action, which is going to return this collection of, of media items. Um, and let me show it to you. So I basically uh, have this media item GORM service, which is a service uh, which is uh, given by you by the plugin. It returns a list of uh, media items, which is a domain class, really simple domain class, uh, which gives you like the usual properties that you are going to need if you are uh, going to map into a database a video, which is going to be like the artwork, image URL, the description, the title, subtitle, the duration of the video, and then some ratings. These are all enums. So if you are like developing an application for the UK, so you have like some ratings, which I have no idea what they mean, but they are like the ratings for the movies in the UK. Uh, so you get all this uh, with, the, with the domain class of the plugin. Uh, the interesting stuff happens in the markup view. So if we go to the, media, to the TBML controller again, you see this controller returns a map uh, which three keys, the media items list, the media item count, and the categories. The categories are going to be this uh, patrimonio, ethnografia, and naturaleza. They are in Spanish, so they will be like nature, ethnography, and the other one. Um, so a uh, markup view is uh, the same conventions are with the GSP apply. The only thing, instead of uh, suffixing the file with uh, .gsp, you, do, you use .gml. So this will be like uh, tbml index.gml. So it works the same way as with the JSON views. You have like here the model. As you see, I have like three items, one item per each key that I returned from the map. Uh, I have uh, the categories, which is a, a, actually it's a list of strings, and the media items, which is a list of the movies. And then, basically, you are outputting XML. Uh, and inside the XML uh, generation, you can use like Groovy constructs. Like, for example, I have here a, an each construct, uh, or a, you can use like a find all. So it's really, really easy to generate an XML document using markup views. Um, actually, not just markup views, it's really easy to generate a, an XML document using Groovy in general. Um, how do you manage the events? For example, when the guy selects a video, uh, you manage with this on select. So it's the same concept like you have like in HTML that you have like on click, sometimes with JavaScript or on Hoover, like when you have the mouse over. So this is the same thing. When you have on select, this get document is actually a JavaScript method that we saw before. So if you remember in TBML kit, the get document is defined as a JavaScript function. So once uh, I come here to the, here and I select with my remote, I select a video. What I am asking is I am doing another request to the Grace server to get me another XML document. And that document is um, handled by the show action of the TBML controller, by this action. Same concept, really easy. I basically uh, fetch a domain class, and I give it uh, as the model, and then I am giving the related videos. So these are these, those related videos here at the bottom. Uh, and the XML is generated with this a file which seems pretty big, but it's only because you can see here I am, for example, rendering the videographers that you saw in the left side with the metadata and the video editors. So those guys here is basically XML that you are supplying. Um, I have in the plugin as well uh, several uh, assets that you can use to render like uh, HD and CC captions and this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, this is as easy as it shows. Basically, you generate XML documents in the server. Uh, you need to uh, have some JavaScript to handle the navigation. Uh, and yeah, I, it's hard for me to think that there is an easier way to develop uh, TBML kit applications than with Grace. 
because it combines both the XML rendering and the uh, JavaScript uh, management really easily. I have a still a teaser somewhere. So if you have any questions, if not, I let you go to lunch. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, I, if the question is uh, why does IntelliJ doesn't handle correctly the... With the JSON views, yes. I, I am unsure. There are some things that are not available in markup views. For example, templates are not available, which are really powerful in JSON views. Um, I am unsure about the static compiling, uh, if they have the same cap capabilities. Uh, I think, for example, on hot reloading that Jeff talked works really nice in JSON views doesn't work in, in markup views as well. So there are some limitations. Uh, many folks are not using the markup views, so they are getting less attention than the JSON views. Any other question? Thank you guys for coming. <laughs>